These are the stories topping the news. Lighting Exchange Distribution Program launched. Montserrat courts investors in China and thousands march for missing Mexican students. Good afternoon and welcome to ZIZ's Midday Newscast for Thursday, October 9th, 2014. I am J.D. Keynes. Now the news in detail. The Ministry of Energy is making headway toward fulfilling its promise of making St. Kitts and Nevis a totally green economy with the launch of its lighting exchange distribution program. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Energy, Lenwick Lake, says it is the mission of the Ministry of of the ministry to ensure that citizens and residents enjoy the benefits of affordable energy. The Ministry of Energy is committed to advancing the energy mandates of the government and as the Prime Minister so ably mentioned, to see St. Kitts and Nevis become the smallest green economy in the Western Hemisphere. We want all citizens to continue to enjoy a comfortable lifestyle where affordable energy plays an important role in achieving this. Our mission is to provide practical, step-by-step -step assistance to all residents of St. Kitts and Nevis while educating them along the way in how energy can make their lives more affordable and comfortable. Minister of Energy, the Honorable Dr. Earl Asim Martin, commended the SIDF for partnering with the Ministry on the project. This project will see the distribution of somewhere in the region of 323,000 LED bulbs donated by the SIDF at the cost of 2.5 million US dollars. And I think the SIDF deserves great commendation for partnering with the Ministry of Energy once again. The program, which is geared towards changing all forms of lighting in residential houses to LED lighting, is free of cost to residents. The St. Kitts Nevis Chamber of Industry and Commerce went into the community on Wednesday to present nine gift baskets as part of the Manufacturers Awareness Week 2014 celebrations. The gift baskets were presented to manufacturing industry employees who are unable to work due to illness. The recipients included Joyce Lynn Phillip of Jaro Electronics, Ruth Lynn Malwain of Lutran Liamigua, Gloria Percival of Sun Island Clothes, Evelyn Jones of Harrow Silver Controls, Claudius Jeffers of Cary Brewery, David Watley, a.k.a. Super of St. Kitts Masonry Products, and Janice Dickinson and Angela Henry of Cajola Cristada. Manufacturers Awareness Week 2014 continues this evening with an awards dinner at the St. Kitts Marriott Resort. Pink Lily Cancer Care is gearing up for its annual Cancer Awareness Walkathon and according to its public relations team, the registration drive will intensify next week. Pink Lily Cancer Care volunteers will register participants for this year's walkathon at the Memorial Square in Nevis on Tuesday, October 14th and Friday, October 17th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Executive Director Leah Paris Cambridge has called on members of the public to participate as getting involved helps kick out cancer. Pink Lily Cancer Care's Walkathon is one of the activities the charity has organized in the month of October, the month recognized internationally as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Pink Lily Cancer Care also observes October to raise awareness of breast cancer and encourages women to perform self-examinations and go for their mammograms, Parish Cambridge said. This year's walkathon will commence at 6 a.m. at Chickenstone in Gingerland and culminate at Pennis Beach by Sunshine's Bar. We move now to regional news. The Montserrat Development Corporation recently led an investment delegation to China. The delegation, led by Montserrat Development Corporation Chairman John Ryan and CEO Ivan Brown, visited the country to attend the 18th annual China International Fair for investment and trade in Ximen. Montserrat sent the mission following, the, following an invitation from China's commercial attached base in Antigua. The island, which has been on a new push to promote investment and development, exhibited at a booth featuring Chinese translated materials, including a guide to doing business in Montserrat. The MDC said it received a number of, of queries concerning both potential investors in the hotel sector and at the island's port project. 
Barbados is making headway in the fight against breast cancer. Gynecologist Dr. Shirley Hanoman Jago said the mortality rate between 2006 and 2011 remains very much the same at 9 to 11 percent. But while women have been taking the awareness seriously, Dr. Hanoman Jago says too many are still being diagnosed with breast cancer. Here's one in this report. We've noticed it over the years. Like it started out with. Um, 60 new cases a year, which is like, and then about one, one a week, and then when it's about two weeks, now we have between two and three weeks. Mm -hmm. And down at the Cancer Society, the breastfeeding program, as small as that program is, uh, within the last year, we have, we've had an average of one to two new cases per week. That. So therefore, when you take into account that only the breastfeeding program and you have um, other private clinics, mm -hmm. the hospital, and all the definitely. A young farmers group in Dominica has been provided with agricultural tools and supplies to increase the yields of their respective holdings. Parliamentary Representative the Honorable Dr. John Colin McIntyre made the presentation during a short ceremony. We hear more in this report. Spare hills from a serious farming village and the young people here, they embrace agriculture seriously. And we have decided under one of our programs with the government of Dominic and of course our Prime Minister assisted tremendously with this one where we have purchased for them sprayers, knapsack sprayers, and brush cutters, cutlasses, forks, fertilizer, agrochemicals, and you name it. We have provided for, for these young men here where they're going to be, we, we're going to be distributing it today among themselves and they have their holdings in the, in the various parts of Mount Prosper and we thought as a government it would be good to embrace our young people here because we, make, we want to make sure we keep our people on the right track. The presentation to the group of 16 young men is a fulfillment of a promise made at a recent meeting in the community. The Prime Minister was present at the meeting. We had in excess of at least 70 young persons from the village of Mount Prosper present at this um, gathering. It was a lovely social event. We socialize it with our people, especially the young ones. And what, there's a conversation that was held with the Honorable Prime Minister and myself, among with some of the young men here, where they, said, where they, where they mentioned to us that they had some challenges with, you know, getting um, ag fertilizers, agrochemicals, knapsack sprayers, tools, brush cutters. And they thought, you know, that if they could, you know, get some assistance from government, the Prime Minister immediately called me and we decided that we're going to make these um, items available to them. The farmers have described the presentation as timely and important. The agricultural program is a high revive for us because, I mean, we need it in the village. We have enough land and thing to work and we need a little, a little help with it. So it's a very good vibe that the, the government helping us with it. So It's a good thing for, for us, man, because now we're willing to work, man, and, you know, develop the, the, the community in one prospect, you know. So them tools and things we got there, you know, it's a good shot for us, uh, for us to hold our head, man. Because if you have something to do, you know, yeah, so we're giving, we can be saying thanks to our, our partner up there, you know. Yeah, Mr. McIntyre, yeah, I've been very thank thankful for the, the things you give us here, you know. Internationally, thousands of people are marching through the streets of Mexico demanding justice for the group of 43 students who remain missing after they were taken by the police. Several marches also took place in Europe, North America, and other parts of Latin America. Al Jazeera's Rachel Levin reports from Mexico City. Frustrated and angry, tens of thousands of Mexicans took to the streets in the capital and throughout the country, demanding President Enrique Peña Nieto's resignation. They are protesting against the forced disappearance and possible massacre of 43 university students at the hands of local police in Guerrero, one of the poorest and most violent states in the country. Many blame the government and are demanding answers. The president has won awards abroad, but he is destroying our country and killing our people. You are not alone, they chant, as one of the fathers of the missing students addresses the crowd outside the National Palace. The government is supposed to take care of us, the kids, the young. 
but we're absolutely unprotected. So this march is not only to support them, but to give them hope and courage. We must not be afraid. It was the largest day of protest so far. The 43 missing students in Guerrero sadly is not an isolated incident here in Mexico. Since President Enrique Peña Nieto took office two years ago, more than 8,000 people have gone missing. Mass graves like this one, found a few miles from where the students disappeared, are still very much a part of the landscape in Mexico, despite claims by the government that violent crimes are down. More than 36,000 people were killed in drug-related violence in the first 19 months of President Peña Nieto's administration, according to a leading Mexican investigative publication. And extrajudicial killings are also on the rise. In June, soldiers killed 22 suspected members of a drug gang. Now three of those soldiers have been arrested on charges of murder. What has changed is the government's communication strategy, but not its security policy. This doesn't mean that the violence is no longer a problem in Mexico only that the government refuses to admit it. A doctor in Madrid says the Spanish nurse infected with Ebola remembers touching her face with gloves after treating two Spanish missionaries who later died from the disease. The nurse, Teresa Romero, is the first person known to have contracted the deadly virus outside West Africa. Meanwhile, hospitals in the UK are preparing themselves to deal with an Ebola case should it become necessary. Here's more this report. They thought they were taking every precaution, treating Spanish priests brought home from Africa. But a simple error means one of the nurses is now an Ebola patient. Teresa Romero was wearing protective clothing. She went into the room just twice. Today, the hospital said it had identified a basic lapse. We have analysed what she did inside the room and the process of taking off the protective suit. And she told me that at some point she might have touched her face with her glove. In a quiet suburb of Madrid, men in biohazard suits, here to disinfect Teresa's flat and remove the family dog. With the cases in Madrid increasing anxiety, ministers met in Edinburgh and London to review UK plans. We are one of the most international countries in the world. London is the most international city in the world. And we need to be prepared. And we have uh, the Royal Free, a hospital that probably has more experience than anywhere in Western Europe in dealing with these kinds of highly infectious diseases. One British nurse has already been treated safely here without the Ebola virus infecting anyone else. The unit at the Royal Free in London is the best equipped in the UK, providing the highest level of isolation. But around the UK, most major hospitals have isolation units. They're on standby as part of the NHS infectious disease plans. They can be used for anything that's highly contagious, including, if needed, Ebola. And some, like the Royal Victoria in Newcastle, have been preparing their specialist teams. We have that state of readiness. Our challenge is, can we ensure that our staff are well trained well versed with the needs of the one-to-one -one care these patients demand. An Ebola case here can't be ruled out, but the risk is very low. And after the infection in Spain, nothing will be left to chance. And after the weather, the skies today will be bright and sunny along with patchy clouds. Temperatures are expected to reach a high of 30 degrees and a low of 24 degrees. We will experience light and variable winds reaching a speed of 2 miles per hour and a 40% chance of showers approaching. This evening is expected to bring light showers as well. And that's it for ZIZ's Midday Newscast. Join us this evening when we present our major news package. I have been your presenter, J.D. Keynes. Have a great day.